Hello, my name is Matt Rabel and I'm a developer advocate at Okta. If you want to learn more about Okta, what we offer, I invite you to go to developer.okta.com. If you'd like to know more about me, I invite you to go to Twitter. I'm on Twitter at mrabel. I'm also on LinkedIn at mrabel. I have a website at rabeldesigns.com. And today we're going to be doing a basic CRUD tutorial and building an app with Angular 5 and Spring Boot 2.0. Spring Boot is an opinionated way of building production ready Spring applications. You can build web applications and APIs very quickly and easily with the Spring platform and Spring Boot. And we'll also be using Angular which is a very popular framework for building front-end applications with TypeScript. Spring Boot 2.0 brings in a pretty significant feature in its new Spring WebFlux framework. However, I'm going to keep things simple and use Spring MVC. Angular 5 has a new HTTP client as well that we will be using. We'll also be using our Angular SDK to build an app that basically allows you to view a list of cars edit that list of cars, add to it, and shows a animated GIF that matches the car name. You'll need Java 8 and Node 8 installed to complete this tutorial. So to begin, we'll start by heading on over to start.spring.io and create a new project that uses Java, Spring Boot version 2.0.1, and Maven. So to begin, you will want to type in a group ID, and usually you'll want to use your company name or the reverse domain name so I'm going to use com.octa.developer and then for dependencies I'm going to use JPA H2 for a database, embedded database, REST repositories, Lombok and web. I also like to add actuator just because it's a very cool feature of Spring Boot it allows you to monitor your application. So then click generate project that'll create a demo.zip or whatever your artifact name is and I'm going to create a directory to hold both the client and the server projects. So we'll create that using make dir. And then I'll move the downloaded demo.zip from downloads demo into the server directory of my new parent directory. And then I'll cd into that and open that in IntelliJ. And the first class I'm going to create is a car.java that basically just has an ID and a name. And we'll use Lombok to reduce the boilerplate code. So we just need you know, a bunch of annotations instead of actual getters and setters. So you can actually paste it right in there and IntelliJ will create the new file for you. And then I'm going to create a JPA repository that allows me to CRUD with my database that entity. So Spring Data makes that very easy to do. And then I'm going to create an application runner that populates the database. So this is just a feature of Spring Boot. This application runner will insert a bunch of default data. I'm going to use spaces instead of tabs. Space people make more money according to Stack Overflow. Um, but you'll see we just have a number of, of default cars that we're going to enter into our database. And then we'll start up our application. And so we can see those cards have actually been inserted into the database. So now we'll create a cool car controller and this will filter out the cars that aren't so great and just show the ones that are, are cool to look at and hopefully we'll get better Giphy images from that. This does a find all streams and filters it so it filters out the gremlins and the stag and the pinto and the yugo. We'll have to restart our app for that to take effect and then we can use HTTP IE to actually talk to that endpoint of cool cars and see that it's filtering out the ones that aren't so great. So that's working. We got Ferrari and Jaguar and Porsche and Lamborghini and Bugatti. And so now we'll use, we'll create an Angular client using Angular CLI. So Angular CLI is a great tool because it basically 
allows you to get away from writing a bunch of boilerplate code for your new Angular app. This will install all the dependencies as well. And the first thing is I am going to use Angular Material to make it look a little better. So install those dependencies. The CDK is a component development kit that is required by Angular Material, but it doesn't pull it in by default. And then we're going to use Angular CLI to generate a service called car. So G is short for generate, S is short for service, and then we'll put those in a shared directory. This is just a convention that I like to follow. And then we'll open it up in IntelliJ, which works great for TypeScript. In that car service, we're going to make a call to that cool cars API using HTTP client. And I don't like to compile my TypeScript next to my JavaScript because it just, I have Webpack to do that for me. We'll add HTTP client as a module to our app module, and then we will also specify car service as a provider. You can also do this on the component level, but it's typically easier to do it at the module level. And you'll notice we have some warnings. Our imports look kind of funny, so I'm going to change TypeScript so it puts uh, some space padding around that import, spaces, and then ES6 import, and then also change the punctuation so it always uses single quotes instead of double quotes. And now if we hit Command-Shift-O, that'll actually reformat it correctly. And we'll get rid of this white space because I like it nice and concise. Now we'll generate a car list to display those cool cars from our API using ng generate component car list. And this car list will use that car service, call its get all method, subscribe to its results, and set it to a local variable called cars. We'll import that car service and now you'll need to update the car list component HTML to show the list of cars. ng4 is how you loop through data in Angular. And so we just display the car name there. And then we're going to update the main page, the app component.html, to actually render that app car list. Okay, so now we'll start our application using ng serve and this will recompile and refresh if anything changes. So we'll go to localhost 4200, and it doesn't work, but it's because of CORS, C-O-R-S, Cross Origin Resource Sharing. So we need to enable that on the service. You can do that with Cross Origin annotation from Spring Boot. It makes it very easy to do, so we just add that annotation. And we'll also add it to our car repository, so when we're doing crud, um, not just fetching the cool cars, but editing cars, um, it'll work there as well. So then we'll need to control C and restart our service. And now our application should be rendering those car names. There we are. So we got the cool cars rendering. Let's go ahead and add some Angular Material components so it looks better. These are all the ones you'll need for buttons, cards, inputs, lists and animations. So in app module, go ahead and add those as imports. And then it's kind of tedious to import those one at a time, so I typically just copy and paste the imports. Once you save that, it should build successfully, and then we can replace just that H1 with a matte toolbar. And then in the card list component, we can use the card layout and card header and content and list items for each car as well as eventually an avatar for the, for the Giphy name. So now if we add some CSS, one of the themes from Angular Material, it'll look a lot better. Now you can see we have our list 
starting to look good, but we don't have the images in there. Well, that's because we haven't called out to Giphy to get them. So Giphy is a service that has a bunch of animated GIFs, and I wrote this service that will call Giphy with the car name or anything that you pass into it and fetch a GIF or a URL for a GIF that matches that. So we create Giphy service dot TS. And this uses a public beta key. So if you're planning on using this in production, I wouldn't recommend it. I would get your own API key. It limits it to only one image being returned. And you'll see that get method calls the API and just grabs the first image that comes back. We need to register Giphy service as a provider in our app module. And then in the car list component, you'll want to add it and loop through all the cars that come back from the car service and basically fetch their image. So add the Giphy service as a constructor dependency. And then we'll loop through all the cars and call Giphy service for each one. And now we actually have images coming back. Now let's edit them. So we'll create a new car edit component. And in order to do CRUD, we're going to need get, save, and remove methods. So copy these from the tutorial into your car service. Still using HTTP client, but actually going and fetching the individual car ID, saving the individual car, um, whether it's new or update does a post or a put and remove as well. And so we'll add a link from our car list component to that edit screen using router link. And then we'll add an add button so we can actually create a new car. So let's see if that works. Oh, we haven't imported or configured routing yet. So in app module.ts create a constant for the app routes routes in some countries and then import the routes component and we'll use the form modules eventually so go ahead and import that as well as the router module And then in car edit component.ts, this is where the real meat of the application lies because it's going to render, it's going to allow you to save, it's going to allow you to edit a car. So if you look at this class, it's got a constructor that takes a number of dependencies. Activated route will allow you to get the parameter or the ID that's passed in. And then of course car service and Giphy service will subscribe to the results and set the car locally. If there's an href, we know it's a, a car that already exists, so we're just updating, not creating a new one. You'll want to unsubscribe from any subscriptions that you have, and then the go-to list goes back to the car list. And then we'll create an edit screen, or modify the car edit.html to have form fields, and to use mat card and mat form field from Angular Material. We have a hidden field called href that will allow us to determine if it's an existing car or a new car. And then to make the image for, from Giphy look a little better, we'll just go ahead and add some CSS to give that a little bit of a margin. And then instead of using the app list component or the car list component, we'll use router outlet in the main app component. So at this point, you should have a list that's editable. You can add new cars. We'll do a Volkswagen bus, one of my favorites. And you can even edit it. So all that's working just fine and dandy. You can even delete. And so this is all good, but you might want authentication. So let's show you how to do that. With uh, Spring Security, you can add OAuth support to the server side. So 
So add the dependencies for Spring Boot Starter Security and Spring Security OAuth 2 Auto Configure. And then you'll need to create an Open ID Connect application on Okta. You can sign up for a developer account at developer.okta.com if you don't already have one. I of course do, so I'll go ahead and sign into my tenant. I keep all my passwords in one password, so type that one in, 158606 and it logs me in and I'll go ahead and create a new application and it'll be a single page app and I'll call it Spring Boot 2 and Angular 5 and we'll need to change all the URLs from 4200 or from 8080 to 4200 And then this client ID here down at the bottom we'll need eventually, but not right now. This is how you configure Spring Security to talk to OAuth on the server side when you're using Spring Boot. So it comes with an application.properties. Let's refactor that and rename it to application.yml or application.yaml. Yet another markup language. Paste that in there and then we'll need to populate that client ID. Copy it from our application. And back into our application.yaml. And then, of course, tell IntelliJ to re-import everything so it recognizes those property names. And then also enable the server side as a resource server so it looks for an authorization header that gets sent in from the client side. And restart everything on the server. And now if we hit localhost 8080, we should see that it actually denies our access. So that's all working. And now we need to add security on the client side. So you can do that with Okta's Angular SDK, which supports Angular 5. Our 1.0 version was just released, so I like to install specific versions. So npm install Octa Octa Angular, the 1.0 version. And then in the app module, you can configure the properties for the issuer, for the redirect URI, and for the client ID. And that client ID is going to be the same one that we used on the server, so I'll just copy it from there. And then you'll need to add a new route for the callback after you come back from Okta. And IntelliJ is not resolving that import, so I'll just go ahead and copy it from the tutorial. And then you need to initialize and import the Okta Auth module, which sets everything up. And now, one of the things that can be handy, you don't have to do this, but I'd like to create an interceptor that adds the bearer token that comes back from Okta to the header. So I'm going to create a new file called Okta Auth.interceptor.ts. I'll put this code in here and You'll see here this implements HTTP interceptor, it has an intercept method, and then it calls this async handle access method that goes ahead and sets the bearer token. What's this problem here? Oh, no trailing white space. There we go. So that's fixed, and this will only send it to localhost because Giphy's API fails, and you don't really want to send bearer tokens to just anyone. So then add this interceptor in app module. and modify app component to have login and logout buttons. Finish importing everything. So you'll see this login button calls Okta Auth login redirect and the logout calls logout. So we're going to, oh, there's also this uh, this toolbar spacer here, which basically spreads things 
um, put some on the left, some on the right. So we can use a flex layout for that. Put it in our application component.css. And then that is authenticated variable that determines whether to show login, log out can be set up in our app component. So this uses Okta auth service, which we'll have to import. And it uses async and await to actually get that without using promises and dot then. And it also subscribes to the authentication state changing. And then we'll restart. So now if we look at our client, and we go back to the main screen, you'll see we have a login button. But we still have that car list, so we kind of want to hide that. We just want to show login without an empty car list. So let's go ahead and create a new component called home. This will be our default route. And it'll just show the login button. So configure that in app module.ts as the default path. And then we'll move that logic for the login button into home.component.html and then in the home component we're going to have to add a dependency on octa auth and set up that is authenticated logic or variable so it actually works and then we'll import usually IntelliJ will import this just fine but it's not working for me today for some reason and then modify app component so it just shows that logout button and it also uses router link to go back to home when you click on it. So that's a handy feature. The click will still call that logout method but the router link will also route afterwards. Now you should be able to open your browser to 4200. We still have it going here so go back to 4200 and we'll see that login button. We can click on it it'll route you to Okta and we're logged in. Uh, if I clicked on this car list I know that it won't work though because the cross origin annotation doesn't play well with Spring Security so you do have to add a simple cores filter in the server demo application.java and there are a couple choices for the cores filter so make sure you pick the spring one and then URL based cores configuration source make sure you pick the one that's non-reactive and then save that restart your server and refresh your client which probably isn't needed click the car list and everything's working And you can even add a new car name. How about a Lambo? And then the Giphy image is always surprising. And kind of awkward. So if you want to see the source code for this application, it's on GitHub at Okta Spring Boot 2 Angular 5 example with all the instructions to clone the project and run it as well as create an OIDC app and configure the server and the client. There's a number of other related blog posts you can check out, tutorials if you're interested, um, both with Kotlin and TypeScript and OpenID Connect. If you're interested in Okta, we have very simple pricing. 7,000 active users a month as a developer for free and if you want to upgrade to more users, you can easily do that. Thank you and hope you have a nice day.